So this lesson is all about gene pools. And we're gonna try and understand the idea that selection pressures acting on the gene pool change allele frequencies in the population, including stabilizing selection and disruptive selection. We're also gonna look at how uh, changes in allele frequency can be the result of chance and not selection, including genetic drift. And we're also gonna try and understand that allele frequencies can be influenced by population bottlenecks and the founder effect. Now, there are various uh, disturbing factors that act to change the allele frequency in a population. These include mutations, non-random mating, gene flow, genetic drift, and selection. We'll go through them one by one. Mutations, for example. Now, mutations are a source of new alleles in a population. Mutations as already described in this course, are random changes in the DNA sequence. And they do not happen that often as we have checking mechanisms in place, but there are so many cells that they are bound to occur at some stage. And in animals, only mutations in the germline cells, those are uh, eggs and sperm, will affect the alleles of the next generation. Mutations in somatic body cells will die with their owner. What about non-random mating? Well, this is the idea of sexual selection, which occurs where mates choose individuals based on certain characteristics. Humans can interfere with this via selective breeding. Inbreeding in some populations occurs, which also increases the frequency of homozygotes. The third one on our list is gene flow. Okay, now allele frequency can be affected by alleles entering or leaving a population via migration. Immigration could introduce new alleles to a population while emigration could cause some alleles to be lost from the population. Gene flow can also arise due to dispersal of seeds, pollen or spores. The fourth one is genetic drift. Now in small populations you can get a much smaller gene pool and allele frequencies therefore can change really dramatically. In these smaller populations, allele frequencies can occur due to chance, which we call genetic drift. There are two common examples of genetic drift we'll look at, population bottlenecks and the founder effect. So what is a population bottleneck? Well, the size of a population may, may be dramatically reduced by a natural catastrophe, a new disease, for example, or hunting by humans or other very efficient predators or habitat destruction. Therefore, many of the original alleles are lost and the remaining population have a very limited gene pool. As it re-establishes itself, it will have a very different allele frequency from the original population, and it could even become an entirely new species. An example of this is with cheetahs. At the end of the last ice age, cheetahs almost became extinct. Although the population numbers recovered, their genetic diversity has remained very low because they are all descended from the ancestral population bottleneck. All cheetahs have about 99% of their alleles in common. As a result, they are vulnerable to environmental change. The founder effect occurs when a small number of individuals colonize a new habitat and start a new ice age population, producing a voluntary population bottleneck. If there are unusual genes in that new founder population, uh, then they may become amplified as the population grows. These are common in evolution, especially in remote islands where a few animals or a few plant seeds made by chance float to a remote island during a storm and give rise to new populations. In natural selection, this is our fifth uh, disturbing factor, um, the environment essentially selects which individuals survive and therefore which genes get passed on and how a species evolves. We call these factors in the environment selection pressures. Animals also select each other sexually due to specific traits. These are both examples of selection, sexual selection and natural selection. There are actually two types of natural selection we will look at to see how they, how they influence genotype frequency in a population. We'll look at stabilizing natural selection and disruptive natural selection. Now with any population there's a range of variation. The majority of the population will be somewhere sort of in the middle, in the mean, and then you get a few uh, of extremes. So for example here is the beetle wing color. We're expecting most of them to be the, the average, but 
due to mutation or slight variations, we get a few either side there, okay? Now, what happens is that that can be stabilized if the average is favored in natural selection. So the, the beetle color in the middle may be better camouflage. They are um, selected for, the other beetles get eaten by birds uh, or predators and die out, they don't reproduce, and so our graph uh, gets bigger around the middle. Uh, this is what we call stabilizing selection. It stabilizes the population. Example of this would be human birth weight, where large babies have a higher mortality rate, and so do very, very small ones, and therefore the medium-sized babies are selected for. Disruptive selection is the opposite. This is where the two extremes of the phenotypes are favored. And it's, it's, a very, it's not a very common type of selection at all, but actually it brings about the most significant evolutionary change. Okay, we're more likely to split and get new species occurring, as you can see, because we've now favored the two extreme types and the mean is not favored at all and is selected against. 